The big news finally came as well. UFC 300, it has a main event. It is Alex Pajeda versus Jamal Hill. So guys, very, very, uh, very busy last 10 minutes in the sport here that we just had. Very soon, the world's best league will put on an anniversary tournament which promises to go down in history. In the main event of UFC 300 that will take place on April the 13th, we are about to see the return of a former light heavyweight champion who didn't lose his belt in a fair fight. However, in his way will be a two-time champion of the world in the face of the Brazilian Poetan. But apart from the main event, we are about to see many great fights that deserve your attention. So take a seat and get comfortable as you're about to see an epic promo for the upcoming show. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words and subscribe to the channel. Here we go! Prelims Bobby Green vs Jim Miller You guys are just finding out now, but I've been doing this for 10 years consistently. I put all the new guys, all the old guys, I've proven myself and now I'm back to prove myself again. I'm like Michael Meyer. Guess when they think they killed me? Come back. The official start of an exciting part of the preliminary card takes off with the fight of two veterans. Let's start with Bobby Green, as last year he was competing quite frequently, but we haven't seen him perform this year yet. The American has been competing on the professional scene since January of 2008. He got into the UFC in February of 2013. Since then, the King successfully performs in the lightweight division no matter who is in front of him, whether it's the same veteran as him or a young prospect on a win streak with big potential. Last year, he fought four times in the cage, scoring two stoppages, one loss and one no contest. Despite his age, Bobby continued pleasing the fans of the sport and proved that he still has rounds in his clip. The same thing applies to his future opponent. I was born to be a fighter. I was made to do this. I was made to be in this type of rough and tumble light. I'm a big fan of Jim Miller. That kid's a savage. Jim Miller is one of the main old guys in the world's best league who despite his age, continues to beat the stereotype and earn convincing victories by stoppages. Throughout his long and rich career, and he is 40 years old by the way, and has more than 50 fights, the American veterans shared the cage with many renowned athletes and former champions and he wasn't inferior to them in any aspect of the fight. Besides that, he conquered a couple of titles in the regional promotions, which eventually became the reason for his signing with the UFC. Right now, Jim Miller is on a streak of two stoppage victories, and if we talk about the last couple of years, he is 5-1 since October 2021. Overall, this guy proved long ago that it is too early to write him off and that experience still matters the most in the cage. That is one of my goals. I don't know what it is, bro. I think God's saving that guy. But every time we've been known to fight each other, it's something that happens. I blew my knee once. Um, I may wait on two weeks' notice. I make the wait, and after I'm going to see the doctor, I pass out. My lungs fail. My kidney fails. And then I get popped for fucking DHEA for taking a supplement from Walmart that I watched on fucking YouTube. And now I fuck myself for the third time. I'm like... Is it just not meant to be? Or is it that God's testing me? It's one of the two. That you're going to keep fighting and try to push through this and say, God, want to keep pushing back, see how bad you want it? Or is it he saying, don't do it. I'm going to keep cursing you every time. I got to go find out the answer. Quite an intriguing matchup that will highlight the best traits of both veterans and finally give us a long awaited fight that will definitely go down in history. Davison Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt. No controversy this time. That that guy is violent. That was, that was an insane fight. I feel bad for Joe. Joe's one of the nicest guys in the sport, um, but he solidified himself tonight as, as as you know. No controversy. We know who the champ is. Uh, and and now at 125 and 135 pounds, we got a couple of nasty guys. 
Next, we have a clash of two former UFC champions of flyweight and bantamweight divisions. Davison Figueiredo is a Brazilian killing machine who in a short period of time managed to get to the top of the food chain and hurt many elite fighters. For a long time, the god of war has been treating his career as a hobby and exercise for his soul because in his free time, the prospect was working at different jobs. Only when he arrived in the world's best league, Figueiredo abandoned his regular routine and dedicated all of himself to martial arts. Soon, it led to the Brazilian becoming a two-time champion of the promotion and giving us one of the best rivalries in the history of the UFC with Brandon Moreno. Not that long ago, Davison moved up to bantamweight division and earned a unanimous decision victory. Now, he is up for a very exciting challenge in terms of career prospects. But uh, I'm the champion now. I'm the badass dude in my division, so I call the shots. Cody Garbrandt broke into the major promotion at a very young age. Despite that, he quickly rose to the very top and conquered the Bantam Weight Championship. However, as history taught us, it was only the beginning of No Love's Trials. His fall was no less tempestuous than the rise that he had in 2016. For the next seven years, Cody was working really hard on himself in attempts to come back. And recently, there is hope that he can get back to roots. That's uh, that's just life. That's how it goes. You know, I mean, look at my career. I was, you know, six fights in the UFC, world champion, 11-0. I had a, you know, amazing transcend to the top, you know, and some people don't ever get to that position in their life or their career. Um, so I've been there and, you know, I, I'm, I'm forever grateful for the opportunities that the UFC has given me, uh, the learning lessons, the ups and downs, like I, I literally have grown in here so much and to be a veteran in the sport, 32 years old, um, to obtain what I've been able to do and still have so much left in the tank. Uh, and now these two are going to collide in a principal battle. Yeah, I just, it makes sense, you know, it makes sense. Um, and hopefully for April or May, you know, we'll get back to the drawing boards, get back to the gym. Uh, Sean Shelby said he loves the fight, he, you know, so I'm sure we'll be in talks with him soon. For Cody Garbrandt, it's a great opportunity to get his name back in the title picture as a win over such a formidable former champion would be in a third in a row for him. On the other hand, it's going to be great for Figueroa as well because No Love is not a bum in the organization, but a rather prominent figure with an impressive legacy. Main card, Charles Oliveira versus Arman Sarukian. Now, we will talk about one of the most unexpected fights after Justin and Max that will identify the next number one contender for the lightweight championship. Charles Oliveira is a fearless lion who already managed to become the undisputed champion and represent the industry of mixed martial arts and very soon he will face the rising menace of a new generation. Du Bronx is one of the most complete fighters in terms of skills with a vivid career and a record for the most finishes in UFC history. After losing to Islam Makachev, The Brazilian was not sitting on the bench and had time to dispatch Benil Dariush, which brought him back in the title conversation. A similar situation happened with his future opponent. Arman Sarukian lost to the Dagestani juggernaut as well, but despite that, he earned his opportunity to fight one of the best lightweights with blood and sweat. Right now, the prospect is ranked number four and looks to ascend to the top of the most competitive weight class in the entire promotion. Years of hard training turned Sarukian into a versatile cyborg who can find a finish in any given situation. For now, it seems that Aman can become the next lightweight championship as he is only 27, but he already stops top five caliber fighters. Yeah, definitely that, that day Charles was better, but I think something happened with Darius. He didn't look like he used to be and... Uh, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go for this fight, very excited. I, I, it, it's not a matter of can, it's a matter of will. 
Uh, we know it's going to happen. I know I, I am the next one in line for the title. He uh, hurt himself last time, but I'm ready. Let's make this happen. Right now, there's a lot at stake for both of these guys, and the tension around their upcoming fight only boosts our anticipation, which already was very high. We can't wait for this fight to happen as we understand that its outcome can completely change the landscape in the division. Kelvin Cater vs Aljamain Sterling Next, we're about to break down an exciting clash of two very popular styles in the fighting industry, striking and wrestling. Speaking about the first one, its representative is one of the toughest featherweights and a number 8 ranked fighter. Calvin Cater is a very durable athlete who went through a lot of obstacles in the form of vicious opponents and former champions. He already showed that he is high level and he belongs among the best of the best in the world's best league. Recently, the American fighter went through tough times in his career, but very soon he will get an opportunity to bounce back if he is able to pass another challenge. I'm the best, baby! Al Jermaine Sterling, a famous former champion of the bantamweight division who by conquering his title via opponent's disqualification made a lot of noise in March of 2021. But regardless of what people say, eventually this guy proved one simple fact. He didn't get his spot in the food chain for no reason. His subsequent victories over three former champions of the promotion, including the Triple C, who is an Olympic caliber fighter, dispelled any doubts around Funkmaster. In August of 2023, Sterling lost his gold and the status of a champion because he watched Lightning McQueen and he knows that only the young ones tell you when it's time to go. But he is not willing to stop. Very soon, Aljo will debut in the featherweight division and try to get through contenders to the second title shot. A little bit more fresh, had more of a break, got to reset, new weight class, new fresh faces, new challenges. And uh, I'm super excited to show the world what I can do when I feel the way that I do in the gym. On paper, this rivalry looks very exciting because Sterling is truly aimed at getting the title fight and Kader can check him like nobody else. A proficiency test, so to say. Yuri Prohaska vs Alexander Rykic Yeah, and uh, you see him working out in the woods too, like ties pads around trees and he's kicking and punching trees like... Very strange. Yeah. He seems like a super odd dude. He was doing something that's not wise, though. Like, he was patting Glover, saying, good job, you're doing a good job. Like In the, the middle of the fight? Yeah. Oh. Uh. And, you know, Mark Goddard was telling him, like, hey, you're playing a f***ing dangerous game, because that seems like you're tapping. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? We get closer and closer to the main stars of the upcoming show. The next bout of today will take place in the same division as the main event. Very soon, the Czech Samurai will return to the main octagon to retrieve what was his by default in 2022. Respect, admiration and glory being one of the key figures of the light heavyweight division. Until recently, Yuri Prohaska was fighting through his injury outside the cage, due to which he had to vacate his championship, and he deserves credit for making such an honorable decision. Not that long ago, he popped back on the UFC radars and clashed with Alex Pereira, but the layoff affected the fighter and a former champion fell before the Brazilian. Despite that, Prohaska is looking to bounce back, but to do so, he has to face a young and rising opposition. I'm really happy for this opportunity. This fight is the biggest fight of my career, fighting a former champ, fighting a number one contender. For those who don't know, Alexander Rykic is an Austrian who has been competing in the main MMA organization since September of 2017. After not the most successful debut, Rocket quickly bounced back and hopped on a streak of 12 victories. In the UFC, he lost only to Volkan Ozdemir via split decision and his last fight against Jan Blakovic ended with an injury. Apart from that, Rykic does his thing quite successfully preferring to finish fights by knockouts. As we already said, in the last fight he got injured and that happened in May of 2022. 
but for now, he prepares for his comeback. A great foundation of a light heavyweight and athleticism, these are the main attributes that Alexander is looking to utilize to break into the title picture. Right now, he is ranked number 5 and counts the days to the set date. I don't care it was the right fight for me in the next. I wanted to be back as soon as possible. And uh, Alexander was the first one who who was a free free fighter from from top 5 guys in uh, in light heavyweight. So I I I uh, called him so I called him about 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 the, about the fight. What do you think? Who has more chances to win in this fight and how? Frankly speaking, we're very thrilled for the upcoming show as since John Jones left the weight class, the light heavyweight division has been complemented with vivid talents who can set the new direction for its development. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. The further in the woods, the more exciting it gets, right? The main card of the anniversary event continues with a mind-blowing bout between two amazing strikers whose styles fit each other like two pieces of Lego. Justin Gaethje, who is currently the baddest mother will put it on with the blessed and legendary Hawaiian. Highlight's career is filled with flashy moments and it's hard to pick something particular. Throughout his journey in mixed martial arts, Gaethje was constantly putting on a show regardless of the circumstances, venue, opponent or other factors. Justin's every appearance in the Octagon is a long-awaited event that always delivers a lot of emotions. This guy can do fireworks in the cage like nobody else and he proved that more than a dozen times. Due to his credibility that he has been building up for many years, people never doubt that he enters the octagon for the sake of flashy and unforgettable spectacle. The same thing applies to his opponent. Max Holloway is the brightest example that a combination of hard work, diligence, total commitment to his favorite craft, courage and bravery deliver incredible results. The Hawaiian fighter has been among the elite performers for a very long time, whose battles will go down in history and people will be re-watching them for decades to come. By the age of 32, the Blessed One already left a huge legacy in the sport, even though he is not willing to stop on that. He had 9 title fights in the UFC, which include winning the interim belt, then the undisputed championship and 3 title defenses, not accounting for the efforts to break into the upper weight class and, of course, his attempts to get his belt back. In the last 10 years, this permanent top fighter of the featherweight division did not lose to anybody except for Alexander Volkanovsky. Right now, Max set up a challenge for himself which at first glance seems impossible, which is to clash with the main knockout artist of the lightweight division and snatch his BMF title, and then aim at the champions. Uh, the way that I fought Dustin Poirier, the way that I fought Michael Chandler, being unemotional, content in my situation and, and just being under those lights. Uh, I trust myself to perform and so I'm going to prepare myself, prepare my legs, because this man is a workhorse and I can't let him outwork me. Momentum is everything. I gotta touch him early. I gotta touch him hard. And I gotta make it ugly. Are any of you guys gonna shoot for a takedown when you guys fight each other? You watch us fight? <laughs> that, that, so no. You watch UFC, bro. So no. So no. You watch That's UFC? Definitely not so in no? the plans. Not in the plans. No takedown. Not the plan, bro. Not at all. Depends how hard he hits me. We don't know about you, but we can't wait to see this rivalry and enjoy it to the fullest. The hardest thing to do right now is to wait for these two monsters to enter the octagon. Main event, Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. What's up guys, I am here 
in the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. And I'm gonna announce the main event for UFC 300 right now. It will feature Alex Pereira defending his light heavyweight title against Jamal Hill. Well, dear friends, meet the headliners of UFC 300 that had earned the honor to share the cage at the anniversary event, which promises to go down in history. Let's start with the contender. Your performance was phenomenal, man. I mean, it was, it was amazing. To see you pick apart Glover like that and to do so well on the ground too, I mean, that, that was a big victory. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people thought that I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't, well, that was just a general assumption was that I couldn't, I couldn't grapple on the ground and things like that when that's definitely. Jamal Hill is a fighter from a new generation who is not only able to force his will in every given aspect, but also is a professional of his craft who is capable of dismantling every opponent at their own game. Absolutely every performance of the American fighter goes under the title of violence, brutality and unshakable spirit which not everybody possesses. Since his arrival in the UFC, Hill started to dispatch everybody in his way, letting people know that his goals and plans are a lot bigger than performance of the night bonuses and stuff like that. Jamal's instantly set his priorities and began to work for results, the last item of which was the championship. And overall, he reached his goal in January of 2023, after he retired Glover Teixeira and conquered the light heavyweight title. However, after some time, he also had to vacate the belt like the Czech Samurai due to an injury, and a lot of things changed in the division during his absence. After the last fight, you know what I mean? He never questioned, you know what I mean? His manager, George and Ed Suarez, got this fight booked for him, and in a certain way, if maybe had asked him before, he would have said that he's happy to go fight straight for the belt, but on the other hand, being able to fight young is a very good test for him. It's a good way for him to prove to everybody that he's ready to fight for the 205 belt and that he, he also belongs on the weight class. So he's about to turn 36. He don't have too much time to be playing around. But on the other hand, it's a good way for him to start with the right foot on the weight class. Alex Pereira doesn't need an introduction. It would seem that just yesterday, people fantasized that his UFC signing would be short-lived and that soon the Brazilian kickboxer would have to give way to the young talents. But in reality, Powhatan started a crusade for conquering mixed martial arts, which dates back to his triumphal victory over Israel Adesanya in November of 2022. And as of today, he is one of the most dominant fighters who has already beat four former champions of the world's best league. After moving up from the middleweight division, Pereira set a new direction for his career and became the two-time champion of the main MMA organization without any issues. It means a lot to me to be able to conquer this after so many years of training and dedication. And also it's very important for me to be able to show to everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody know where I came from, my humble beginnings. So to get here and achieve this is a, is a, is a big achievement for me. Um, I, thought it was, I thought it ended a little early, but um, all in all, I was just thinking like, neither one of these dudes are on my level. Like neither one of them, I don't, I don't think they are in, in any facet of the game. And uh, I can't wait to get back in full health and be able to show that. Given the most recent events, meaning the news that the UFC spent a long time looking for the headliners of the anniversary event, this choice is more than justified and logical due to Pereira's status as a superstar that draws a lot of attention. And if we account for the fact that he was a double champion in glory and its Hall of Famer, there are absolutely no questions as to why this fight was put together. Considering the styles of these warriors, their furious will to win and desire to be the best together with skills of elite level and personal motivation, which is a successful title defense and revenge for his mentor for Powhatan and a desire to retrieve what's his for Hill. We have no doubts that the main event at UFC 300 will make a lot of waves in the fighting community. Yeah, it's, an, um, it's incredible. It's an amazing opportunity. I'm completely humbled by it. Like, um, Whenever I came into this, I wanted to come into this making history and uh, being a part of big moments and things like that. And um, this is just an opportunity for that and I'm grateful for it. I'm going to work my ass off to make sure I'm ready for it. And uh, y'all know how I'm coming. Y'all know how I'm coming. My history, my, my resume speaks for itself for how I come to perform. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, hundred percent. I see my, I see myself as superior everywhere. I see myself as a superior striker, as a superior grappler, as a superior clinch worker, as a superior thinker, as everywhere. I'm, I'm superior to him and everywhere, everywhere in this game, and I'm gonna show the levels to that. What are your thoughts on the anniversary event of the world's best league? Leave your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos, and of course. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon.